creating. And the lecture explores the way in which theories of curating brought back to mind the ancient Greek notion of kalkogatia, the intertwinement of aesthetics and ethics, and with it, the other ethical responsibilities, principles, and values that art forgot to address while giving privilege to its formal aspects. Um, and Susanna is going to argue more um, about it. And I would like to introduce uh, Susanna to, to all of you. And uh, Susanna is also a um, mentor of our program uh, this year. Uh, and she's a theorist curator of visual arts and culture. From 2016 to 2019, Milevska was principal investigator of the Horizon 2020 project Traces at the Polytechnic University in Milan, and she curated the final exhibition, Continuous Objects as Shame Subjects. Uh, she was endowed professor for Central and Southeastern European Art Histories at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna in 2013 to 2015. She holds a PhD in visual cultures from Goldsmith College London. And in 2004, she was a Fulbright senior research scholar. She curated a number of international exhibitions uh, and I will go name only a few. The Renaming Machine from 2008 to 2011, Roma Protocol, Austrian Parliament Vienna and called the witness at Bach in 2011. She also initiated a project called the Witness Roma Pavilion, Venice Biennial in 2010, 2011. Um, she was also um, in 2012 awarded uh, for Alice Award for Political Curating and Igor Zabel Award for Culture and Theory. She published the books Gender Difference in the Balkans in 2010, Renaming Machine, the book 2010 and on productive shame, reconciliation, agency, Sternberg Press in 2016. Um, I would like to do some housekeeping before I hand it to Susanna. Susanna is going to talk for approximately 40 minutes and then um, we can have a discussion uh, with her. Um, you are free to um, post the questions into the chat and then um, we will ask them one by one to Susanna after she finishes her uh, presentation. Um, I would like to say that this lecture is also uh, recorded and that we are co-streaming a lecture with a number of partners that we established this year for the program. Um, CCAL platform uh, that is based in Belgrade and our collaborator of the public program series, uh, Duke University in Shanghai. So I hope you uh, have a, a great time with us in next one hour. And thank you, Susanna, for joining us. Thank you, Biljana, for this lengthy introduction. I feel I don't have anything else to say anymore now that you've read all my CV. But uh, today uh, I'm really grateful that uh, you joined me in a strange situation uh, during this pandemic. And in a way uh, it makes sense because uh, I imagine this lecture as a thoughtful experiment in which I want to focus uh, the ongoing debate about the reciprocal relation and tension between the aesthetical and the ethical. And I just uh, told to Aguirre and Biliana that uh, in a way, I feel very much uh, uh, on the side of the ethical right now. Uh, and uh, it's very important to understand how these tensions became uh, so important. Actually, I want to extrapolate how curating can overarch and uh, in a way reproach the difference between the categories of beautiful and good, form and content, and among other perpetual and artificially made distinctions and dichotomy emerged in art theory during moder modernism. Uh, my uh, lecture, my presentation will uh, consist of four different parts. The first is introduction, which is the explanation of why I um, use this term, Kalkagathia. And then the second is uh, a kind of uh, excursion 
uh, becoming curator and curatorial subject, something that uh, each of us curators uh, have been through, but I just want to theorize a little bit. And then uh, how the curatorial knowledge uh, is produced, uh, the third part, and uh, last, instead of conclusion, I will offer two case studies of the uh, exhibitions that I curated, but uh, that uh, somehow informed me and made me curator. Viviana uh, mentioned some of them. So I would like to, uh, today I would like to address the questions of whether such dichotomies as uh, the dichotomy between aesthetics and ethics have ever been viable and how curating helps or could help the art practices in overcoming the hierarchy between aesthetics and ethics. I belong to uh, an older uh, generation of curators where the form uh, was really on the hierarchy much higher than the content, so bear with me why I feel uh, still important to talk about this. I will explore the ways in which the theories of curating brought back to mind uh, the ancient uh, Greek notion of uh, kalokagatia. Uh, I don't see the presentation, Igerim. Do you flip it? You can go forward several slides. So Kalokagathia is a platonic teaching uh, consisting of the harmonious combination of bodily, moral, and spiritual values. Uh, Kalokagathia, however, here in my presentation stands for the intertwinement between aesthetics and ethics, and with it, the other ethical responsibilities, principles, and values that art somehow forgot to address while giving privilege to its formal aspects during the modernist period. Uh, you can go faster with several slides. Here, uh, yes, here. So you can see this relation between uh, beautiful and uh, good was always a kind of uh, different and uh, I uh, use it as a metaphor for the tensions between curating and art. Next slide. And uh, also between ethics of selection, ethics of representation, ethics of conduct uh, as something that equals aesthetics of curating. Next slide. Next. Uh, next, I want to argue that uh, curating helps activating the catalyst uh, potential of art without having to compromise its formal aspects as a kind of leverage that redresses the otherwise imbalanced relationship between aesthetics and ethics. Curating, in my view, lends out to art its innocent and aspirational belief in such a balance because the ethical concerns in art history and art criticism have long been toned down while form was prioritized over content. And now I come to the second part, uh, next slide, uh, becoming curator, which is uh, a way to discuss such critical positions towards the phenomenon of curatorial and to distinguish it from curating as a profession. It, in a way, it becomes a stop here. It becomes ever more urgent in the precarious and dire pandemic period when the tensions between aesthetics and ethics, care and self care dominate our professional and everyday life. I've written a text about this in this book, the curatorial that was edited by Jean Paul Martinon, uh, my ex supervisor from Goldsmiths College, and I owe a lot to this Deleuzian kind of background of uh, uh, becoming curator, the notion that I coined. Next slide. So when and how becoming curator takes place uh, has intrigued me for quite some time. According to the Deleuzian concept, this is not the same as an accumulative process through which one gradually becomes a curator. It could be emphasized that these questions are 
not uh, directly related to the personal decision that makes someone choose the profession of curating or to the educational process. Uh, the, uh, in the book, in the foreword, Jean-Paul Martin uh, mentions that actually the curatorial is a kind of disturbance and utterance, uh, a narrative. My narrative actually is uh, the event of becoming curator uh, that in a way starts from the Deleuzean concept of uh, becoming. In the context of self-differentiation uh, and self-actualization as an art curator, I find it particularly re relevant to discuss the conundrums that stem from conflicting personal, institutional, and systemic events of becoming curator. Next, uh, the main challenges to be discussed uh, further and to be unraveled here, how one uh, knows what he or she knows as a curator and how one reconciles the differences, contradictions and conflicts stemming of the overlapping between being curator and becoming curator and becoming a curator. I often have problems with these uh, differences uh, that uh, some uh, British even don't make uh, uh, sense of it because it's very theoretical. The difference between becoming a curator and uh, becoming curator. Next slide. So, uh, in a way, uh, these uh, challenges uh, are for me really important because uh, I started my career as art historian and I have never been trained uh, in curating. So in a way, uh, these uh, differences uh, were something that informed my practices uh, during all these years. I refer to two movements that according to those and Guattari are always uh, um, necessary for this becoming curator to take place. Uh, next slide. Uh, they first stipulate that uh, there must be a certain isolation from the majority. And they interpret this first moment when becoming curator emerges as a potentiality. As I said, uh, for example, from the group of art historians, I somehow uh, uh, decided to become curator. But then a certain isolation must occur from the minority namely when a curator self-identifies with curating and is recognized as curator through the events of curating and events of becoming. So I, it will be much clearer afterwards when I come to examples. So next slide, uh, these two conditions are predetermined by a complex and rhizomatic grid of uh, relations and knowledge exchange between the curator the artist, the institutions, and the audience. So there are four different communities here, if you want. This does not give the curator a kind of essentialized position. In order for the curator to remain recognized through each movement in this chain, he or she has to be involved in becoming. So uh, in other words, to investigate the concept of becoming curator is not the same thing as to ask how a woman or a man decide to become a curator and uh, to investigate the circumstances that have helped one to outgrow the art historian normativity. This is not the same as to say that the two professions necessarily contradict to each other, but uh, the tensions exist. So we came to the chapter that uh, I titled curatorial subject because uh, when I say uh, becoming curator, it necessarily uh, somehow uh, uh, impose that there is uh, some uh, curatorial subject behind it. So today becoming curator has indeed uh, become an emergent and self-aware position in the contemporary art world. Uh, next slide. Becoming curator here is a means to get outside it is about negotiating the discursive constitution of the subject. But uh, for example, Matt, uh, Matt Cormack reminds us not to forget that discourse is always corporeal because we are in fleshed versions of the speech 
that constitutes us from culture without and from self-regulation of identification within. The next slide is the uh, quote. In order uh, for here to ever be a potential for actual becoming, the potential of the body we are now must be recognized. So I'm talking about this embodiment of the becoming curator, uh, which uh, in a way in thinking what for a curator becoming subject entails, for me, the final result of the complex physical and linguistic shifting of the process of subject construction is the emergence of a specific curatorial grammar that locates a certain voice. So we are talking now about the voice of curator. Next slide. Uh, that uh, this uh, certain voice does makes a difference between who is speaking and the speaking itself. Next slide. So uh, when I uh, quote Claire, Claire book, uh, I talk a lot about these becomings, which is also based on the Luz and Guattari's concept of becoming, because uh, she is so concerned with this grammar of being and the grammar of becoming. Uh, in a way, uh, for me, this was informative uh, to somehow conceptualize the a concept of uh, becoming uh, subject in curating, becoming curatorial subject. So uh, Claire Colbrook uh, offers a clear distinction between subjectivity understood as fixed being and becoming. She objects to any conceptualization of the subject as something fixed and pre-given once and forever. According to her, the self it affects is not an essence, but an event, thus paraphrasing the loose and his notion of becoming. And this event is what I'm talking about. Becoming in a Deleuzean sense is thus not a process that happens through linear time and the result of uh, dialectically overcoming certain obstacles or contradictions, but it is more about becoming the offspring of the event. Please next slide, uh, we should go faster. So becoming subject is not about recreating new identities, but more about coexistence and, uh, coexistence and about expressing differences, but without overwriting them with one language. And this is where this relation between the curator and the artist uh, becomes really important, uh, where uh, actually uh, this event takes place. And when I uh, mention uh, events of becoming curator, as I said, it's not some kind of linear development where you learn and outgrow uh, the initial uh, situation, the initial project, but it's really about uh, complex uh, intertwinement of uh, events. Next slide. Uh, in July uh, 2000, 18, uh, Violeta Chaposka, who is an artist who is based in Melbourne now, but uh, comes from Macedonia, completed her land art performance salt. And in 2020, she exhibited the project in Skopje. It was the third part of Chaposka's long-term project, a trilogy that followed her previous land print projects, Small Lake and I and the Eye. Actually, this trilogy was uh, curated by me and uh, the first project of the trilogy, Small Lake, was uh, the project that was my first curatorial project ever. What uh, was in common for all these three projects uh, were uh, actually revisiting of the Small Lake on Baba Mountain uh, in Macedonia, where actually uh, Violeta Chapuska uh, spent uh, some parts of her childhood. Uh, and I'm also born uh, in Bitlo, which is next to this small lake. Uh, by climbing the mountain all the way to the small lake, uh, Chapuska managed to address various aspects of the relationship between the cultural gender identity, nature, and her artistic practice. Next slide. And here you can see the small lake, which is on uh, 1200 meters height. And uh, you can see me uh, there with the hat. Uh, next slide. Uh, 
so many years ago and so many kilograms ago. Uh, it was the first time that I created a project. Uh, I took this uh, kind of challenge to climb on 1200,000 meters. And that was uh, climbing on this peak. Actually, it was part of this. Uh, uh, it was one of these uh, most uh, important events in my curatorial life. Next slide. Uh, I titled this project, uh, I uh, characterized it as a land print project because uh, Violeta Chapovska is a printer, but she uh, didn't really make prints in the traditional way. Uh, all the prints were ephemeral and it was a very ecological project. Next slide. And we can end with the last one where the only material that she used was the salt. Next slide. Okay, uh, so th this was uh, the event that I mentioned that uh, it was one of these events uh, uh, of which I feel as offsprings. Um, I uh, talked, uh, I mentioned to the curatorial knowledge and this is how actually the uh, knowledge that uh, I already had uh, accumulated as art historian somehow intertwined with this uh, kind of uh, uh, experiment and uh, I would say empirical uh, events. Uh, next slide. So curating has recently uh, become an academic subject and curatorial courses are taught at uh, many different uh, departments and universities. Curatorial knowledge became a metaphor for cross-disciplinary etymology that uh, intertwines uh, epistemology, that intertwines philosophy, theory, and epistemology of curating and practice. Uh, the curatorial cognizing subject uh, that I already mentioned is not a fixed object. It is constructed by individual uh, through his or her own experience of that object. The translational performance of the curatorial event resides between the two different ends of knowledge, the epistemological and the critical, the known and the unknown. Next slide. And next slide. I mentioned actually that I want to address how art history relates to both theory and practice of curating. And uh, the former is usually assumed to be more theoretical and the latter more practical. While the courses and university departments of art history were for a long time not addressing curating, the departments that initially thought curating as a subject mainly focused on curatorial practice. As I mentioned, I was uh, traditionally uh, educated as art historian. And to what was this, uh, how this knowledge was uh, in a way uh, combined and influenced by the practice, uh, artistic practice, uh, was, uh, was really instrumental. Uh, what you can see now uh, on the screen, this is the EEG of my brain. Uh, before the first uh, group exhibition that I curated in Skopje, uh, which was Red House, Order Chaos. And this was a cognitive experiment with uh, one cognitive scientist from Macedonia, Georgi Stoyanov, Expectancy Wave, where actually he uh, connected me with some sensors. And the experiment is uh, actually when you know that something is going to happen, and you expect it. They measure the behavior of your brain during this expectation. Uh, the brain of expectation uh, at this moment was actually what was to come uh, in my career as a curator, how this knowledge, how this art historical knowledge, how the art practices will uh, somehow intertwine and how this uh, uh, inherited uh, discourses about the aesthetics and form, uh, the formalist aesthetics that was uh, very hip at that uh, time, will intertwine with the postmodern artists that I collaborated. So, next slide. Actually, becoming curator could be thought only through destabilization of art history and through deconstruction of various practices of exhibition making. 
this coexistence of different languages and concepts and in relation to the event that I mentioned, in relation to a curatorial project statement or self-conscious utterance in which a curatorial subjectivity emerges as a rhizomatic coexistence of multiple and non-hierarchical differences and lines of thoughts. Uh, next slide. Uh, in a way, this is uh, why and how uh, I uh, somehow, uh, next slide, uh, I was uh, interested in uh, critical curating as a concept. The concept of critical curating developed in the late 1990s out of necessity to differentiate curatorial engagement in research, knowledge production and critical theory from managerial and promotional domination, uh, dominated approach to curating. In a response to various urgent issues related to contemporary art, culture and politics, critical curating focused on profound critical and theoretical inquiries that challenged and contextualized contemporary art curating. So I came to something that I call conclusion, but actually is the second part of uh, this presentation. Next uh, slide. Uh, I want to stress the importance of the role of the curators in the re-establishing of the relation between aesthetics and ethics within the art and curatorial worlds, and to bring in a few examples from my curatorial practice as events of becoming curatorial subjects. There is no doubt that promoting new and provocative artistic concepts and models of production is embedded in any curatorial position, but this is how I want to conclude without the self-critical analysis and research-based and theory-based curatorial knowledge and the agency, the event of becoming could have never taken place. Next slide. One of uh, the projects that is not an exhibition, it was educational project, pedagogical project, similar like this forum of Abiliano Chirich, was the curatorial translation uh, series of workshops that I curated in 2007. Uh, it existed of many different workshops, but uh, what I wanted to actually uh, mention here is the first uh, workshop ever in Macedonia that took place virtually in Second Life, in the platform Second Life. Next slide. This is me, this is the avatar of Susanna Kuhn. Actually, this was uh, again about waiting. Uh, this space, virtual space in Second Life was uh, curated as a kind of a virtual room to wait for the participants to come and to discuss what will happen next in real life when they will uh, arrive uh, in Skopje. Next slide. So this virtual space very much reminded me to uh, the uh, situation right now where we are all somehow uh, limited to our own spaces, but at the same time we interact uh, globally across different continents. But at that time, this was a choice. Uh, right now, this confinement is actually a result of uh, uh, the uh, pandemic uh, situation. Uh, next slide. This is the group of uh, curators that uh, were engaged and arrived only later in Skopje and uh, had the workshop that uh, now sounds very much like uh, science fiction and virtual, uh, imaginary. Becoming a curator has nothing to do with becoming curator. While the former is a pragmatic decision not only to make a living out of one of the sexiest professions available on the international art world right now, the latter is fundamentally related to one's own position in the world as a thinking subject. Not that anything is wrong, don't let, uh, get me wrong, uh, not that anything is wrong with the profession curator, but ever since I started this journey, I assume that becoming curator is about opening up a new route in understanding art and different critical ways in which curators and artists position themselves in the contemporary art world. Uh, 
I call this uh, curatorial agency. Next slide, please. It is a concept that is indebted to the recent critical rethinking of the curatorial of curator's role in the context of contemporary art, culture, and society. Similarly, uh, to Alfred Gell's concept of art as agency, which states that art has the power not only to passively represent the world, but also to act curatorial agency assumes in the same vein that the curator is no longer considered to be author of an exhibition or a more presenter of an already existing set of artistic concepts and projects. Uh, in contrast, the curator is rather assumed to be an active societal agent that as a catalyst contributes towards a cross-referential understanding of art. Uh, next slide. Uh, between different theoretical registers and artistic, curatorial, ethnic, uh, cultural, ethnic, class, gender, and sexual camps, and thus acts towards the improvement of the society in general. It acts as a kind of a social and ethical agency that uh, entrusts its intellectual and theoretical capacities in curatorial knowledge, production, as well as art for social change and collaborations among curators, artists, and activists. It is embedded as one of the major cultural policy concepts in uh, relation to the urgent need for cultural translation of lesser known art and cultural traditions. It conceived in this way a Kalokagathian curator distributes towards a cross-referential understanding of art and towards the rapprochement between different artistic, cultural, ethnic, class, gender, and sexual camps. In a way, uh, this uh, will, uh, I want to exercise this with the next discussion, which is uh, the discussion about curatorial agency, whether it's emancipatory. I start from Rancière's concept of uh, uh, emancipation. Uh, he says that emancipation is the encounter between two heterogeneous processes. The first process is the one of governance, according to him. It assumes a creation of com community that relies on distribution of shares, hierarchies, positions, and functions. Uh, this is what Rancière calls policy. The second process is the one of equality. So in order to have emancipation, you need to have the governance, but also equality, where the multitude of practices that start from the assumption that everybody is equal and aims to prove this assumption. Uh, next slide. Yes, next. Uh, I already went through this. The reason why I'm talking about this is uh, that uh, uh, ever since I came back from Goldsmiths College, where I completed my PhD in uh, gender difference and visual cultures, I uh, started to be engaged with the curating of uh, uh, projects that uh, uh, included Roma artists. Uh, uh, the way how I started this uh, is uh, something that perhaps is also an important event that I want to uh, share with you. N next slide. Uh, the visual aesthetical representation in different environments can produce certain unexpectedly severe disruptions within contemporary democratic policy. Uh, for me, uh, this was actually the, uh, the semi-documentary film, Shutka Book of Records, that uh, informed me and also influenced me to start this another kind of journey uh, in both uh, theoretical and curatorial sense of uh, research, how these representations actually disrupt the lives of Roma and how we as curators can intervene. Next slide. Uh, the movie uh, Shutka Book of Records was uh, advertised as semi-documentary. Uh, it was uh, uh, premiered, it was launched in Skopje in 2006, uh, and uh, it was a kind of series of 17 uh, different uh, stories about uh, Roma people who live in uh, 
Shutorizari, which is a neighborhood a municipality near in Skopje. Uh, these uh, 17 main stories were based on real characters, but for some reason, the artist, the, the uh, director Alexander Manich, decided to advertise the film as Sami documentary. Next slide. Uh, that was the reason why uh, there were protests in front of the cinema when uh, this film was launched, because the community of Roma people where this uh, film was shot, reported in Skopje, was never in Formed when it was never shown the film that was based on the real lives and names of the 17 people. There was a press conference and this, uh, uh, in a way, this protest where one of the panels was, was saying, you want Oscars with Roma Misery, in, influenced me, induced me to start uh, looking at this uh, 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 situation in Skopje, in my town but also to search for maybe different kind of artistic practices. I uh, stress the importance to reflect on the strong message of this unexpected public performance of collective body, another event that influenced me for my own curatorial events. This unity of a political group, next slide. And next slide. The unity of a political group that is actually the result of an articulation of demands. The articulation of this unity does not correspond to some pre-established positive entity. It is a shared negativity. And this shared negativity somehow uh, was really important, was instrumental for my curatorial practice for my next projects. Uh, I will just mention Call the Witness, uh, an exhibition that I curated in Bak Utrecht in 2011, and the Roma Protocol that I curated in Austrian Parliament uh, in the press room in 2011. Next slide. And uh, these are just the, the list uh, I will share this with you later of texts that I've written before I started curating uh, exhibitions uh, with Roma artists. Next slide. Next slide. So uh, Call the Witness was uh, actually uh, uh, both of these projects, Roma Protocols and uh, Call the Witness, attempted to revisit the principles of representation and put emphasis on the relevance of the question who has the control over the means of representation and thus supports and promotes certain dominant cultural and moral values? And of course, who has this control over what is aesthetics in this situation? The project called The Witness attempted to, uh, was actually uh, based on the gypsy legal system. Uh, next slide the Roma legal system and uh, the courts, the traditional courts in Romani culture that uh, uh, somehow provided me with this uh, format of a very unstructured uh, kind of uh, uh, court. Uh, I use this metaphor uh, in several other projects uh, as uh, I mentioned the next project was uh, Roma Protocol. Next slide. Which took place in the Austrian parliament uh, during the West Wolfgang Festival in Vienna in 2011. So uh, I will end with this uh, project because this uh, event was very important uh, for me because uh, finding this space that was a kind of a metaphor for this diplomatic and judicial context uh, uh, that uh, somehow served the best for this uh, title and concept of the project uh, Romani Protocol, Roma Protocol was uh, a kind of uh, this event that uh, somehow I want to exemplify here of becoming curator. Next slide. In the diplomatic context and in the judicial sense of the term protocol refers to an agreed set of conventions, including arbitrary rules, procedures, or ceremonies. Roma protocol actually questioned the recognized and generally accepted system of order of acts 
which uh, uh, with which the near rebel state produces a double bind action with which it first proclaims Roma as exceptional population and then creates exceptional protocols that leave Roma outside of normality and common rule as a kind of sealing of all stereotypes and prejudices against Roma. Uh, however, today the general state protocols seem to exclude Roma, as if none of these basic rules and procedures can apply and secure the equal involvement of Roma in contemporary society. These protocols are not issued because Roma cannot follow such general procedures or because they defy them, but simply because the dominant hegemonic powers tend to produce a very unique set of protocols addressing Roma issues as specific, unique, and exceptional. Next. And next. By so doing, the neoliberal state produces a double bind action with which it first proclaims Roma as exceptional population and then creates exceptional protocols that leave Roma outside of normality and common rule. So it's a kind of vicious circle. Uh, the role of the contemporary artist is thus not limited to uttering anti-racist testimonials and highlighting injustices, as it is not the role of the curator. Next slide. But it also suggests how artistic expression and agency might play a role in affecting change, both within the artist's own communities and in political institutions and judicial systems. In the struggle to fight the racial biases, uh, social inequalities, and misrepresentations. So I mentioned that the space uh, was for the Roma Protocol was the Austrian Parliament Press Room, where not only uh, are uh, delivered the news about the work of the Austrian Parliament, but also all these stereotypes can often be uh, distributed and redistributed, perpetuated. The space was thus chosen as one of the symbolic spaces where the control over information is produced and distributed to the media. And thus it was the space where one should discuss the ways in which new laws and policies are produced in Roma in order to discipline Roma. And I would say also new aesthetics of uh, uh, Roma artworks. Next slide. And next. The artists and artworks that I just want to mention quickly were Milutin Jovanovic, Marika Schmidt, Alfred Ulrich, and Mogorzata Mirkatas and Marta Kotlarska. Next slide. Some of the projects actually did not take place here. This was, for example, uh, the Camera Obscura workshop with one high school uh, near Vienna that the artists uh, from Poland were, uh, uh, next slide, created before the opening of uh, this exhibition. So that was Romani Click project by Malgorzata Mirga Tas and Marta Kultlarska, where they turned the whole classroom in Camera Obscura and they uh, collaborated with the high school uh, pupils, students uh, of this uh, school in order to create new representations, new kind of aesthetics uh, that was based uh, on their own experiences, not on something that somebody else cuttered for them. Uh, the other, next slide. The other project was uh, by Marika Schmidt, uh, What Remains, which was actually a pile of documents that the artist uh, researched for in the archives uh, of uh, uh, different uh, concentration camps uh, and uh, she found uh, many relevant documents uh, about uh, her relatives, making visible the existing evidences uh, by putting the pile of these documents about uh, Roma uh, prisoners, uh, this transport list, prisoner uh, obituaries, uh, inmate staff cards uh, from Auschwitz, Dachau, Buchenwald, Mudhausen, Ravensbrück, all these documents were just uh, piled there and copied in so many uh, different copies that everybody could uh, take with them. 
uh, the focus was also on testimonies of four different women. You can see, uh, next slide, you can see here the artist uh, talking with uh, uh, the now late artist, uh, Roma artist, uh, uh, Chia Stoica, uh, who was one of the most known Roma artists who survived four different uh, camps. Uh, in a way, this, uh, uh, maybe I don't have time uh, now to go through the other projects, but I just want to quickly summarize that uh, actually the way how uh, these events, different events of uh, uh, questioning the already existing aesthetics, uh, intertwining it with new, uh, with the ethical issues that uh, we inherited with this aesthetics, and recreating, reconceptualizing uh, the aesthetics in uh, together with these uh, ethical issues. Somehow, maybe we can uh, uh, define it as this new Kawakagathia that uh, we as curators can uh, somehow produce it together with the artist. Thank you. This would be my conclusion and the end of the lecture. Thank you, Susanna, very much. Um, we do have some 10 to 15 minutes for the question. So please, uh, if you have some questions, put them in uh, chat. Can I just mention something that Kalo uh, yes, uh, uh, in a way, is a, a word that I used uh, that has never been used in this context. And this is still new for me. I'm not quite sure, you know, that it can uh, work. But it's, uh, as I said, it's a thoughtful experiment. And uh, this is how I want you to understand it. It's not a definition. It's not something, you know, like a recipe. It's just a question. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Maybe while the others are preparing the questions, um... I have one, how would you, just to, as a response to uh, our current condition um, and the modes working within the pandemic and how do you see, because before we started the talk, you just said that you're not interested in exhibitions and you think that's a format that is um, irrelevant to, to, to the challenges of our time. So just giving, like our current conditions of working in a perspective, like how do you see territorial agencies or responsibilities? Um, if you can speak a little bit about that. Brianna, this is actually the question, you know, that we all face right now. I mean, uh, we all have to rethink this. Uh, when I say that I'm not interested in exhibitions anymore, it's uh, something that is not only related to pandemic. That was uh, coming for me before the pandemic, you know, the pandemic became in a way uh, enhancer, you know, it uh, accelerated uh, this need to rethink the whole art world, not only the exhibitions as format. Because, you know, uh, I don't belong to this uh, institutional system. I used to work in a museum, I used to teach, but uh, my events as a curator were always uh, outside of these walls. And uh, to be honest, you know, I'm not very negative about what is going on right now. Uh, in contrast, you know, it enables us uh, to take uh, the breath, you know, to think what was wrong and what can we do about that. You know, when I started working with uh, Romani artists at that time, there was no one single Roma artist in any panel, in any major exhibition. And this is one of the examples of what there is, there must be something wrong when there, you know, when uh, I started working on Call the Witness, uh, I opened uh, an open call. I was never fond of open calls, but because I didn't have the knowledge, 
I decided just to see as a research tool to use open call. We received uh, 100 uh, different applications from different countries of, in the world that were all done in new media. And everybody was telling me that Roma art is traditional, is very uh, exotic, you know, patchwork-like. Uh, the works that were sent, you know, for this open call were all contemporary artworks because all these artists were either educated or informed about new media. So uh, why I talk about this, it's about all these hierarchies in the art world that with this uh, uh, pandemic in a way became shattered. And uh, I, I must say, this is the only uh, thing that I really enjoy about uh, all this, that even the most uh, experienced, the most, uh, uh, um, the richest places, you know, face the same obstacles that we always uh, were facing coming from Skopje, you know, coming from these uh, small marginalized communities or uh, Shutoriz or wherever, you know, uh, Kazakhstan, we were always on some margins and now everybody's on the margin and finally forgive me for this uh, cynicism but finally it became as a kind of more equal uh, world you know so um, uh, it's uh, just my personal experience you know thank you so, uh, we have mm -hmm. now more time yeah <laughs> Thank you. And also for our Facebook participants, there are around 30. So you can write your questions in comment we will ask in the chat. Mm -hmm. Do we have any questions on the Facebook, uh, Igrim, at the moment? I'm checking. Mm -hmm. In such situations, you know, uh, that's something that I really miss. We would say, oh, if there are no more questions, we can go for drinks now. <laughs> and yeah, this for is coffee. <laughs> for coffee. Uh, I hope for this moment. <laughs> no, we have some comments, but not questions. Okay. Can you share the comments or maybe later you can send? Yeah. yeah. Maybe you can share some comments, maybe. No, this is the really short emotional comments, not... Aha, uh -huh. something to... Okay, so... Um, um, yeah, I just want to maybe ask the last question just to give some um, participants more time if they want to write down something. Um, being currently based within Skopje, uh, in Macedonia, how much... Um, your curatorial agency and curatorial voice um, is is challenged within this um, within our scene with this art scene and um, or um, do you feel lonely within those thinking and those practices that you shared with us? Not really, actually, I must say the opposite because uh, I, when I started working in this field, especially with uh, Roma artists, uh, there were hardly any practices. But right now, I must say that uh, this is, uh, you know, like a dream come true because there are lots of biennials, exhibitions that include uh, artists of Roma origin. Uh, there are lots of uh, for example, uh, solo exhibitions, which was never the case. 
uh, I included uh, some of these artists from the Romani exhibitions in other exhibitions because that was my goal uh, ever since I started, you know, not only to create this small kind of uh, uh, ghettos again, you know, like Roma exhibitions. This was not the goal. This was the beginning. And now I must say that the situation changed. There are several uh, different uh, galleries that uh, exhibit uh, Roma artists, one in Budapest, one in Berlin, uh, two in Berlin, actually, there is a Roma Institute in Berlin. Uh, of course, there are lots of problems now because I, what I can see now is that this new uh, spaces in a way uh, perpetuate uh, the same hierarchies that uh, I started this to go against them, you know? So uh, this is the new problem now, that the art world uh, somehow is so strong. This uh, uh, model of work is so strong because it mm. was established. It was, uh, you know, uh, kind of, uh, it exists so long that uh, everybody else that comes next somehow feels obliged to recreate the same model. There are hardly mm. any, uh, new uh, spaces or new institutions that try something different. You know, these monopoles uh, created me as a young curator because uh, I was raised, in, I was educated in Skopje, but the Museum of Contemporary Art was so closed, so elitistic that I had to do something else, you know? And this is how I see uh, each of these new uh, kind of practices and models and strategies as you know, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's good because you somehow, as I quoted Laclau, you know, it's a kind of shared negativity that uh, often uh, inspires us. Unfortunately, it shouldn't be like that, but, uh, you know, we should embrace it. If it's a, a kind of motivational, why not? And pandemic, as I said, also, uh, in a way, you know, uh, somehow works this way, you know, it... Uh, for example, your own program had to reshuffle and to, you know, to be reconceptualized. And uh, of course, we would uh, prefer to meet all of us together, but uh, you know, this is also something new, uh, kind of a new challenge. And uh, yeah. we'll see if we'll uh, rise up out of it. Yeah. Um. Here, um, so we have a one question from Christoph. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for the presentation. I would like to hear you more about this, how the aesthetical and the ethical can be taught together without making one become the other. And what would be the possible unwanted effects of linking the aesthetic and ethic through the curatorial subject? I think that I answered partially, uh, you know, uh, through this example of uh, Roma aesthetics. Uh, I must say that I'm very critical against uh, uh, the terms like Roma art as something new, you know, because I uh, dedicated uh, all my career towards uh, criticizing these essentialist uh, uh, terms, you know, essentialist concepts about different uh, uh, aesthetics of different groups of people, like feminist aesthetics. I don't believe in that. I believe in something that is, uh, as I said, an event of merge between ethics and aesthetics. And in a way, uh, I try to deconstruct all these essentialist notions of aesthetics as something that is inherited, as something that we all agree and know. And, uh, you know, for me, each event should somehow reinforce new uh, relations, new intersections between ethics and aesthetics. Each artistic project, each curatorial project should be uh, conceptualized uh, after this event, uh, the importance, the relevance of this event. So maybe in future we will hear about pandemic aesthetics, uh, but uh, let's not uh, uh, accept this. Let's think about what the pandemic uh, did to us and how we will 
reconceptualized, as we were talking with Biliana, this uh, new merge, new uh, interaction between ethics and aesthetics, but without essentializing it, you know? This is uh, something that I would be uh, against. Uh, uh, when I mentioned aesthetics and uh, uh, form, you know, I maybe I had to quote more this old generation of a, a white male uh, theorist, art theorist, you know, like Clement Greenberg, that uh, believed in, uh, you know, clear form, pure form. And this is uh, exactly how I was educated in my aesthetical and art historian education. Uh, but uh, as I said, you know, uh, the uh, concept of event enables us to rethink this relation between ethics and aesthetics uh, through these curatorial events. Of course, uh, artistic events, but uh, through this uh, communication between artists and uh, curators. And artists often can be somehow uh, isolated within their uh, form and aesthetics. And this perhaps is one additional role of the curator to give hand, you know, this, uh, to offer this aspirational uh, kind of uh, uh, triangulation between art, aesthetics and ethics. Uh, I'm not sure whether I answered the question, but to, this is how I see it. It's very complex. We should think more about it. I try, you know, to open questions. I don't have always the answers. Christoph, thanks you for a precision. And we have a comment from Louise. She says, Susanna, uh, for Calgo Gatia sums up my own curatorial practices. I'm very grateful that you have brought that up and recoined the term. For me, it felt actually the other way around while maturing as a curator, critical curating was in full bloom and I actually miss mm -hmm. aesthetic consideration <laughs> of dealing with the space or what artistic position to choose. Mm -hmm. And I still, and still remaining political. Coming from a background in art history almost felt like a disadvantage 20 years ago. Thank you again, Susan Altman from Germany. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I often think about uh, the new generation of curators that uh, start right now during uh, the pandemic, you know, what will be their share in this discussion? Because, uh, you know, it depends on uh, really the context of where you start with your first projects. Uh, I, I try to imagine how it feels to be a curator that uh, you're supposed to curate your first project right now. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot imagine, to be honest, it's really important. Maybe the next session should be about that, you know. <laughs> Uh, okay, I think we don't have any questions and comments at the moment. Thank you, Susanna, so much for being part of the program. We will continue with you, with you remotely through our yeah. workshop. And thank wow. you all for joining uh, for Susanna's presentation. Um, and uh, please... Uh, you broke... Uh, uh, can you repeat? We didn't, I didn't Let's hear Let's go for coffee now. Let's yeah. go for coffee. <laughs> Let's go for coffee. I will go to sleep. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, in the second life, there was possibility to offer coffee or drinks to the participants. Of course, virtual one. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> and I hope I see you all for the next lecture by Ekaterina de Gott and David uh, Riff. Um, have a great weekend. Thank you, Susanna, one more time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.